You think back in your own experience when you've gone to a house where there's a dragon hiding underneath the living room rug and nobody's saying anything about it. And then you think, how long does it take to get something absolutely simple done in a house that's absolutely jammed to the rafters with unfinished business? Forever, right? Organizing people in a household like that to even do something as simple as go out for breakfast in the morning or even perhaps to make a meal is virtually impossible. Why? Well, because there's something going on in the household that has been studiously ignored for a very long time and has grown so large as a consequence that it occupies the whole domain. By noon, the dragon filled the house. Its head hung out the front door, its tail hung out the back door, and there wasn't a room in the house that didn't have some part of the dragon in it. When the dragon awoke from his nap, he was hungry. The bakery truck went by. The smell of fresh bread was more than the dragon could resist. He ran down the street after the bakery truck. The house went along, of course, like the shell on a snail. The mailman was just coming up the path with some mail for the Bixby's when their house rushed past him <laughs> and headed down the street. He chased the Bixby's house for a few blocks, but he, but he couldn't catch it. When Mr. Bixby came home for lunch, the first thing he noticed was that his house was gone. <laughs> Luckily, one of the neighbors was able to tell him which way it went. You know, that sort of thing happens to people not infrequently too, right? They, they're not really looking around much at what's going on and they come home from work one day and their house is gone. And what does that mean? Well, maybe their children have become completely alienated from them or maybe their wife has decided suddenly, but of course not so suddenly, to leave. Why? Well, according to this story, it's because something ignored was growing in the house. Mr. Bixby got in his car and went looking for the house. He studied all the houses as he drove along. Finally, he saw one that looked familiar. Billy and Mrs. Bixby were waving from an upstairs window. You know, in, in the 1890s in India, when a house was being built, the local priest, equivalent to the priest, would come by to set the foundation stone. And when he set the foundation stone, he'd take a big spike and drove it into the ground. And the reason he drove it into the ground at the place where the foundation was going to be laid was to keep the great dragon that is underneath the earth firmly pinned down by its head so it couldn't move and shake the house to bits. And what does that mean? Well, it means the same thing that's meant in the New Testament when you're told not to build your house on a foundation of sand, right? It doesn't matter how good the house is or how well constructed it is or how rich it is if the foundation is made out of sand or if it rests on top of a dragon. There's nothing in that household that's ever going to be accomplished that's positive. And the wealth, the display that the house might consist of is nothing but a sham. Mr. Bixby climbed over the dragon's head onto the porch roof and through the upstairs window. How did this happen? Mr. Bixby asked. It was the dragon, said Billy. There's no such thing, Mother started to say. There is a dragon, Billy insisted, a very big dragon. And Billy patted the dragon on the head. The dragon wagged its tail happily. Then, even faster than it had grown, the dragon started getting smaller. Soon it was kitten size again. I don't mind dragons this size, said Mother. <laughs> Why did it have to grow so big? I'm not sure, said Billy, but I think it just wanted to be noticed. So the first thing you might think about is just what happens if you don't pay a bill? Like really don't pay it, right? I mean, when it first comes in, it's only the size of a kitten. But if you leave it alone for two or three years, it pretty much grows into a full-fledged dragon. Why? Well, because things that you ignore have a life of their own, a complex life, like a bill. A bill is attached to a whole 
industrial complex, right? One of whose major functions is to make sure that you pay the bill. And if you don't pay the bill, then you immediately find out what it's connected to. It's connected to something immense and very troublesome. And if you allow the full force of that thing to manifest itself, it's not pretty. So, one lesson from this story is that if something's nagging at you, just a bit, it's probably better to deal with it before it turns into a full-fledged dragon. And then you might think, well, what if it's already a full-fledged dragon, right? I mean, then what's your option? Is there nothing left but to run away? And so then I can tell you what we know from 50 years of studying the outcome of clinical psychological interventions. So let's take an extreme case, right? Let's say something truly terrible has happened to you, and as a consequence of that, you're in shock, post-traumatic shock, which is a condition that's sufficiently serious to damage your brain over time. It's not only a psychological disorder, it's a physical disorder. If you're really stressed, your cortisol levels shoot up. And if your cortisol levels shoot up, that cortisol in high doses is a neurotoxin and starts to damage your brain.